that song? Girls. Okay, today is <laughs> today's gonna be a video that's been kind of highly requested on this channel. It's like how to do double unders. And there's a couple of like drills and techniques and whatnot that can help you get your double unders, but essentially it's like riding a bike. It's gonna be the most restraining thing in the whole entire world, but if you persist and you consist in doing these drills and getting the exercises and doing it over and over and drilling the right pattern, then once you learn it, you'll never forget it. The first thing we want to get out of the way is how long should a rope be? I get that asked this all the time. It's one of those things that you want the rope to be the perfect length because if it's a little bit too long then it's going to lag and you're going to have to put more effort in and the rope's going to be slower. And if it's too short then you're going to end up catching your feet. It's going to get super frustrating and you're not going to have a good time. So for me and for a lot of people that I've seen on the internet, if you stand with one foot on it, the rope should come just below pet level. That means the rope is a good level for your double unders. I would recommend this rope length for everybody, so even if you're new to double unders and you feel like you need a little bit more room in the rope, don't do it, because this is gonna drill your technique. If you have the rope at the right length, it's gonna drill you to have your hands forward, twisted in, nice and low, so you can hit the double unders efficiently. So the first most common problem that I see out there in the CrossFit world of people when they're trying to start doing double unders is the tensor. You get so worried about spinning the rope really, really fast, you then try to incorporate as many muscles as you possibly can to whip the rope. You'll tense up your traps, you'll use your shoulders, your elbows will come away from the body, and you'll end up using the movement of your arms and your shoulders instead of your wrists to attempt to get your double unders. So one, it's going to be a hell of a lot less efficient, and two, because your arms are shot out from the body, coming back to the rope issue, if you've got the right length rope, you're going to catch your legs on it. So for me, the drill that I like to use for this, if this is your common problem, is to just put a band around the upper arm, around the humerus. For a lot of people, including Ed, you'll see that they start to trip up on single enders, and that's just because he's got so used to using his arms and his shoulders and his traps to do a lot of the movement, that when you take those all away and try and promote good wrist action, whilst ultimately keeping the shoulders and elbows and arms relaxed, he can't actually do the movement. So the takeaway point, if this is your downfall, is to try and keep your elbows as close to your body as possible and eliminate movement at the shoulder and the elbow and make sure that most of the whip of the rope is actually coming from the wrist, which you'll see when I demonstrate it now. The second most common problem that I see when it comes to double unders is how people jump. These are all examples of what I've seen in a CrossFit box and I'm sure you've seen them yourself. And I understand why people do it because when you start to double under, if you've got the tempo and rhythm down, then surely you just got to get over the rope. So we will and our body will find a way to do that even though it's obviously not the most efficient way. And if you're doing these things, it's not a bad thing because as you first start out, you are still learning the double under, but we do want to fine tune it so it becomes a lot more efficient, cleaner and quicker. So the things you want to think about when doing the double under in terms of the jump is to be jumping off the ball of the foot, kind of using the reflex of the Achilles whilst keeping a good solid midline and core position. And then this goes back to a quote that Kieran says that I say, that I've heard a couple of other people say, it's not practice that makes perfect, it's perfect practice which makes perfect. <laughs> Let that sink in a second. But basically meaning that if you're one of those people that do these kind of other jumps when doing double unders, strip back to doing a single under, but with that emphasis on rebounding off the balls of your feet using your Achilles and calf muscles, whilst keeping a good, solid, stable midline position. Because as I cut away from the commentary in a second, you will see that there's kind of no difference to, between a nice, solid single under jump and a double under jump in terms of body position or the way you actually do it. It just may be a little bit of a higher jump. Tip number three is all about rhythm and timing. You could be the most physically capable you could have drilled your body position, you can have drilled your arms staying in, but if you don't have the rhythm or the timing, then you're not gonna get double unders. <laughs> the most frustrating thing about double unders is literally, you may, your body may have to create new pathways within the brain to actually get the movement down. Like that's just, 
it's just how it has to be. You know, if you're programming yourself to do something, remember when you did a clean or a snatch, you had to learn that position, that movement, and that takes time. You're not gonna get double under straight away. But what you can do is drill the rhythm into your head so then your body starts to create pathways on how to do double unders, how they should feel, how they should sound. Using as many kind of sensory inputs as you possibly can through noise, sight, feeling through your wrists, feet, etc. Et how a double under should sound. My favorite drills, if this is where your downfall is with double unders, is one, do it with just a rope. In one hand, and then the other. Because sometimes it's how your wrists move and not your arms. So you just take the rope, as you usually would. Do it as you would usually do your single unders. And then get, program that noise and that movement into your head. Same with the other side. One hand is gonna be more dominant than the other, and it's usually which hand you write with. So you're gonna be better on your right hand if you write with the right hand, or if your left hand is, you're gonna be better with your left hand. And usually, the hand that you are strongest with, and that is your dominant hand, is gonna do a little bit more of the movement for you. It just is. Stripping it even further back, if you struggle with doing it with the rope, and you just wanna get that pattern in your head of how it should sound, how it should feel, just do it with your hands. It's a really, really simple drill. You jump up, That's gonna be exactly the same as when you double under, double under, double. It's exactly the same feeling, it's just obviously you're not flipping the wrist, flicking the wrist. You're just literally using your own body's momentum and kind of creating the sound without the rope there. Whew. Right. <laughs> so now you've seen the double under and how it should look. We've explained each part of it broken down. Now you have to put it all together and that's the bit where it all then falls apart. <laughs> It's where the frustration comes in. What I recommend is like if you have got 200 solid single unders with good body position, then move on to the double unders. But then move on to single, single, double, single, single, double. Then over time, once you start to get that feeling and that movement of the double under, it's kind of like a warm up, you know, you would never pick up a 100 kilo snatch. You'd warm up through the movement until you hit that 100 kilo snatch. So it's kind of like the same thing with the double unders. You warm up through the movement, get one, get two, get three, and it's just a thing of practice. Practice makes perfect. You're never gonna get on a bike and ride it. One thing that I learned from physiotherapy when I worked on a stroke ward is that you have to create these new pathways. You have to create the way that your body programs and functions. And whereas Jasmine's on that stage where she's got the single unders and she's learning kind of stage two into double unders where her mind is still programming the movement, is still creating those pathways as to how the movement should feel. When she gets it wrong or right, her body then takes on that feedback, understands it, creates pathways to make it better and more efficient. That's the stage that Jasmine's at. Whereas now I'm at the stage where I have that program there, it feels efficient, it feels good. It's now just building the muscle and building the stamina within my muscles to be able to carry on for longer durations. So just don't get frustrated because it takes a while to build those pathways. It's just really, really, really annoying. Yeah. And I hate it. It's not practice makes perfect, it's perfect practice makes perfect. <laughs> I didn't get the memo. Those other ones are hard. Those other ones are hard. Oh, it's good, 